Hi, I'm Shane Gebauer with Brushy Mountain Bee Farm, and I'd like to talk to you today about our nine frame radial extractors. I've got two here in front of me. Of course, one is motorized and one is a hand crank. Essentially, they're the same extractor, the only difference being how they're operated. Let's first talk about the hand crank. The hand crank has a spring-loaded handle on the side. And to engage it, you'll notice that if I just spin right now, my basket doesn't turn. To engage it, I have to push it in, it locks into the shaft, and now my basket begins to turn. And once I hit a certain speed, what happens is the basket almost starts to go faster than I can crank, and the handle disengages. That's sort of a safety feature so that you don't start cranking and end up uh, hurting or injuring your wrist because it starts going so fast. And certainly you don't want to try and push this in while it's still spinning because again you can see that handle automatically starts to engage and can easily twist a wrist. So to stop it, to re-engage that handle or slow it down, there is a brake built into this extractor on the top right here. You push these two levers together and it applies friction to the shaft to slow the basket down. And that allows you to re-engage the handle. The motorized, of course, is motorized. It has a speed control on the top. This is a DC motor, which um, we actually have to invert from AC current to DC current. It provides more torque, which is necessary when you've got a basket full of honey frames. So to turn it on, you turn it on, and of course, when you start extracting, you want to start off slow and gradually increase your speed. And you may want to get it up to a certain speed and let it spin for a while to sort of spin out some of the honey from the frame so you don't end up actually blowing the foundation out from the frame. And typically, we find that once you get up to about 50%, this basket is spinning amply fast to sling the honey from the frame. Now both these extractors are radial extractors, which means it's going to extract both sides of the frame at the same time. There's no need to stop the extractor, reverse direction of the frame, and, and start over again. It's doing both sides at the same time. With both these extractors, you want to make sure your honey gate's open while the extractor is spinning so that honey can drain out of the extractor and not fill up to the point where it might start to bind up on the basket. The construction of these extractors, food grade stainless steel, any plastic components that may be inside in the basket or the honey gate's food approved plastic, the gearbox on the, uh, the hand crank does contain metal gears. There's another thing that uh, is included with these uh, extractors and there are these baskets. There's three of them and these baskets allow you to extract deep frames. Now the deep frames fit into the extractor tangentially. So what happens is the frame sits in the basket like this and it's actually easier to load once the basket's in the extractor. So this slides down in. Locks into place down there. There we go. And then the frame goes in tangentially. If you're doing uh, deep frames tangentially, you will have to stop the extractor, lift it out, and reverse the frame so it'll do the other side. With medium frames, however, there's no need for, for the baskets. So you can take the three baskets out. And the medium frames, you always lay, load the frames with the top bar facing the outside of the extractor. The reason for that is when bees build the comb, they tend to angle the comb up slightly so the honey drains down into the cell. So when you put the frame in, you want to have that angle working in your favor so the top bar always goes out. And it just simply slides down in and there's notches down in the bottom in which the frame sort of locks into. And so it does hold nine frames, medium or shallow, and it does them uh, radially. Inevitably, when you load up an extractor, 
it's going to be out of balance a little bit. Maybe one frame on one side is really drawn out and the other a frame adjacent to it on the opposite side is not quite so drawn out and therefore a little lighter. That's going to create sort of a wobbling motion. And in fact, if I start this extractor with just that one frame in there, you'll see just how much an extractor can wobble. And this isn't just an empty frame. So as I speed it up, you can see it sort of shimmy and shake a little bit. And what may happen is if the, if the, if the balancing isn't uh, close enough, it'll start to walk across the floor. So the legs of these extractors have holes in the bottom. And we do advise that you anchor your extractor. Now many people are using these in their kitchen. You don't necessarily want to drill it and screw it down to your floor in your kitchen. But what you can do is maybe get a sheet of plywood and bolt it to the sheet of plywood or an old pallet that you can attach it to. And that way you can stand on that and that also helps stabilize the extractor. That's essentially it for the nine frame extractor. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. Contact us via phone or through the website. Thank you, have a good day.